God has responded to our prayers, saying it is now possession season. All creation is waiting for a prophetic generation. It's unbreakable, unshakable. It's possessable for those that dare to believe. I prophesy the greatest miracles are going to happen in the next season. This season is going to see a transforming of our people. It's time to set your foot, say it loud, and shoot it straight. I'm Steve Penny. Welcome to Say It Loud. I want to preach uh, today on something that I think is really going to set us up for a, a, an incredible year. It's 2024 and uh, we've just come through January, which in Australia is the heat of summer, particularly where we are on the northern part of Australia. It's beautiful. It's warm. And everything about the beach and everything is brilliant. And so Australia goes on holidays and uh, into s- relax mode for January. School comes back at the end. And now we're entering into February. Everything launches at the first Sunday of February, which you're seeing today. Sunday, 4th of Feb. And so it's launch Sunday, vision Sunday, whatever you call it. The church kicks into gear, rallies the troops, and away we go. And so this is our God word. Listen, this is the God word that God put on my heart for 2024, for for all of us, for our church, and for many others that uh, listen in and take what God's saying. It's Psalm 66, verse 10 and 12. It says this, Psalm 66, 10 and 12. For you, O God have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined, as silver is refined, as precious things are made even more valuable. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs and you have caused men to ride over our heads. And we went through fire and through water. And this is the word. But you brought us out to rich fulfillment. You brought us out to rich fulfillment. I'm declaring and prophesying that and we'll talk more in the weeks to come about this, that God has brought us out to take us in and He brings us to the border of the promised land, which is where rich fulfillment is promised to us. And so here we are, we've we've gone through January, we've made our New Year's resolutions And already we realise it's not going to happen in the natural. We've been this way before. We've made these promises or resolutions before. And so I want to help you. At the start of the launch of this year, I want to talk on the power of new beginnings. It's totally different to a brand new start, a second chance. Uh, A new beginning is totally something that only God can do in your life. And so I want to give you, lay a little bit of a a platform for you to understand this so you can step into this year as a new beginning in God, loaded with promises that you haven't seen come to pass in all the times you've been trying so hard. Well, let's switch gears, step into faith mode and dare to believe God for a new beginning for this season that we're stepping into. So here's the first point. Jesus is the God of first beginnings. Right at the beginning of every beginning, Jesus was there. John 1 verse 1 says this, In the beginning was the Word, Jesus the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. At the beginning of all things, of all beginnings, Jesus, the Word was there as God speaking new beginnings and and creating new beginnings way back when it all began. We go to verse 2 of John chapter 1. It says this, The same Word, the same Word back then is the same Word now. The same Word was in the beginning with God. That means Jesus is the Creator of every good thing the beginning of every good work. 
began with Jesus. And so every creation by the Word of God is a new beginning. And uh, God spoke new beginnings, creation, into being by His Word. And He said, now you do the same. And so as we come into this year, we need to understand the power of the words we say about this new year and create a new beginning in the name of Jesus. And, and the truth is this, human life because of sin has flaws and it starts anew and then it falls into a, a heap and then it gets up and goes again. But eternal life, the abundant eternal life of Jesus is a continuum of new beginnings. There are no endings in heaven. This blows my mind. If you stop and think about it, that means that every time God speaks, it creates something new and begins a whole new run of increase. And uh, that's why the Bible says the kingdom of God is an ever increasing kingdom. It knows no defeat. There are no endings in the kingdom of God. And we go from strength to strength, glory to glory. And so I believe heaven is increasing uh, in, in every way, the eternal realm in every way, ad infinitum for all eternity. You'll never explore the bounds and the limits of eternal life in heaven because God is the God of creation and new beginnings happening continually. You got that? How powerful is that? And so that's brilliant. That's God's plan. But then something happened. In this creation that God spoke into being, and here's what happened, an ending appeared. An ending appeared in creation. Sin entered into creation and brought an ending to our link to the Father and to eternal life that goes from strength to strength, ever increasing, blessing upon blessing, an ending appeared. So God had to create a plan, or He had a plan uh, to end all endings. You've got to get this. This is not fairy tale stuff. This is the essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that there is an end to endings and the increase of His government and peace shall know no end. And so God put a plan in place, which was, of course, sending the Creator Jesus to earth to destroy endings, the curse of sin that says there's an end. The wages of sin is death. The wages of disobedience is disease and division and lack and everything else. And Jesus came to destroy the power of endings over your life. And so eternal life in Christ, when you find Jesus, He says, I've come to give you life and that without end, that in abundance. Abundant life is eternal life that doesn't have endings in it. It goes from strength to strength, glory to glory. And this is your portion and your lot in life if you can dare to believe it. And so Jesus is the God of creation and the God of new beginnings. Colossians Chapter 1, verse 2. Listen to this. Colossians 1, verse 2. I love it. About Jesus. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, the new beginning. You've got them both here about Jesus. He's the head of the church. He was the beginning at the beginning then He came with a plan to end the endings of sin and uh, He was the firstborn from the dead, the curse of sin, and became the new beginning that in all things, in all His people, in all the church, He might have the preeminence. Don't you love that? This is above and beyond. This is a realm called rich fulfilment. This is out there in an extreme, no, it's not extreme faith. This is the essence of the gospel. It's what Jesus promised to those who believe. And so you've got to get it. Jesus 
is the creator of beginnings and the saviour and restorer to new beginnings. That means the devil, the fallen one, is the God of endings and loss. You can't run with the devil. You can't follow the devil and not lose out in life. It's impossible. He's the God of endings and loss. Get one thing straight. The devil cannot create or initiate anything new. He has no capacity to create new beginnings. He didn't create them at the beginning and he can't do it now as a new beginning. All he can do is steal, kill and destroy. He'll steal stuff. He'll kill stuff and he'll destroy stuff if you allow him room in your life because he is totally unable to do anything new, create anything, bring a new beginning, bring the fullness of life. He can't do it. That's why we've been given authority to put him under our feet. Now, the devil's role is to bring endings into our lives. And he'll do that over and over again if you give room, give no room to the devil. And uh, there's an interesting, I've shared this before because it's such a, a revelation to me. Uh, in the Bible, in Luke chapter 7, it's the only time in the New Testament that there's an engagement with Jesus by this city. And it's the city of Nan, N-A-I-N, the city of Nan. And Jesus goes into this city and it must this city must be a pretty awful place to live. Everything found its endings in Nan. And Jesus said, I'm going to come and break the power of endings and bring new beginnings. And so I'm going to give you the seven endings of life. You need to get these because you will experience the challenge of these in one way or another. And uh, Jesus goes into the city. There's a dead young man coming out in a funeral procession. And his mother, who's a widow, is following with her friends, weeping and wailing, etc. And so Jesus raises the young man up and takes on the fullness of death, which is physical death. Uh, he, he destroys death, the end of life, right there. Bang. So he takes it head on and says, I'm coming into this city to deal with endings and I'm going to show you how there is a life beyond endings. And so death is dealt with. The second one is destruction. Destruction is an ending. And that's why it says the devil wants to destroy. Destruction is the end of your inheritance. Here's a young man. He was the breadwinner for widow mum. And he's gone. There is no inheritance for mum now. That's destruction. It'll always bring an ending to an income stream or to su su supply and provision, whatever it is. That's the second one. Third one is division. Divorce. Family breakdown. Division. Discord. This is the third expression of death as an ending. That's the end of relationship. No longer does mum have the boy, her son, and that relationship is dead, buried and gone. And so division is the third expression of endings that we all have to face and overcome. The fourth one is disease. This is an end of wholeness, completeness, disease. Something gets diseased, it's starting to decay and rot and fall apart. And that's what happened in this young man and uh, that's an ending in our life. Disease brings an ending in a tree or in a group of people or in a person's body. It's another form of death as an ending. The fourth one is discouragement. While Jesus is there ministering to all these people, John the Baptist, who's in prison, sends his disciples to Jesus to ask him a simple question. Are you really the Messiah? We've been declaring you're the one and we've heard some great things. John's having some doubts. And so here's the one, one, two, three, four, fifth, the fifth expression of an ending or death and it's discouragement, which is end of vision or loss of hope. 
discouraged. Poor old John's in jail, about to uh, have his head taken off, and he, he just wants to reach out and say, Jesus, are you really? There? Jesus said, have a look at what I'm doing and tell John I'm the real deal. I'm the Messiah that he prophesied and said, behold, the Lamb of God, uh, when he then baptised me. That's the fifth one, discouragement. Some of you here, some of us here really experience this in our lives. We let discouragement come in and bring an ending to a dream or a hope or a, a time of great courage and joy. Discouragement brings an ending and something dies. The next one, now we're up to number six. This one's defilement. While Jesus is in the city, uh, he engages with a, an immoral woman who's taken in adultery and they want to deal with her. And so he, he enacts forgiveness and release. But defilement is the end of purity. And uh, you may have been defiled. You may have done stupid stuff. And the devil wants to make that an ending in your life. You can't really run for God, do much with your life. You're a defiled, second-rate believer. And that's an ending, and we want to break that in the name of Jesus because He's the God of new beginnings. And I think that's brilliant, and that's what He did here. And then the seventh one in this litany of death and destruction is disgrace. That's the end of honour. This woman was ashamed had no reputation except bad things. And Jesus wanted to restore her into a new beginning to go forth and live whole without sin and upright and, and have meaning and purpose in her community. So they're the seven endings that sin will bring into any community, any society, any family or any person's life. And you've got to know how to overcome them in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? We got it. Here we go. The next one. Sorrow and mourning. Someone gets sick. Someone divorces. Someone, kids run off the rails. All the seven endings of death are loss. And that brings in sorrow and mourning into our lives. Always does. I watch people that have been through tragedy, loss, something been stolen or they've lost something and they allow sorrow and mourning to create an ending and their life changes from that point on and they never recover fully from it. Let me tell you about sorrow and mourning. Sorrow comes from the introduction of an ending. My 27-year-old son, I tell this story, Andrew, at, uh, in 2003, passed away, went to heaven. He died of cancer and his body was sick. And so he passed away and our family and friends were under the impress of an ending that brought sorrow. Sorrow comes from the introduction. We were incredibly sad, tears everywhere over the, and sorrowful that we had lost something precious. Now, the next thing that happens, if you're going through something, if you allow sorrow to stay, it'll turn to mourning. And this is so dangerous. See, sorrow is the, is the introduction of an ending. Bang, it hits us, car accident, loss, death, whatever, any of those things. Bankruptcy could be anything. The sorrow comes in, it's over, it's finished, uh, it's done. But if you allow that to stay, then mourning starts to take over in your life. Sorrow's the introduction of a, an ending, but mourning comes from the ongoing impact of an ending. I lost my son and we were sorry, but I didn't realise that after that, after the sorrow was uh, pre permanent, well, it was present in our life, over the months, it, it turned to mourning. And I realised I don't have my son who loves to play golf and uh, cheat so he can beat me and all that stuff. 
I don't have him any longer. And I started to mourn the loss of those things, the ongoing impact of my loss. And uh, I don't know whether God spoke to me in a word or I just began to read the word to encourage myself. And uh, you know the verse, it says, sorrow and mourning shall flee away. And the only way that happens is when you lift up your head and you look to the Lord, you put your trust in Him and you open your mouth and begin to praise and magnify His name and give Him thanks for the good things. And I somehow, I began to thank God for every good memory, every moment we, sh we shared together. And all of a sudden I felt sorrow and mourning begin to run away, flee away. And uh, I, I say to people all the time, they say, that's awful. How did you handle it? I said, well, God spoke to me and said, your son died, but you didn't. So don't live under the shadow of death. Lift up your head, look again, create faith and hope and move forward. And so sorrow and mourning flee away when new beginnings come into your life. I see someone years later that's still mourning and sorrowful about a loss. And I know immediately they haven't turned to God by faith and said, I want a new season, a new beginning. I'm going to step up in faith. I'm going to lift up my head and dare to believe that my life's not over. Greater things are ahead. In fact, for your, your, your sorrow and your loss, I'm going to give you double, God says. This is time for a new beginning. And Jesus is the one who does that. You have to dare to believe that Jesus destroyed all endings, all endings. The kingdom goes from strength to strength. It doesn't go up, failure, up, failure, up. It doesn't do that. Jesus destroyed the power of endings. John 19, 30 says this, When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar on the cross, He said this, and the devil knew this was directed just at him as much as Jesus was declaring to the Father, my work here is finished. He said, it is finished. And he gave up his spirit to the Father. The devil knew right there that he was a dead dog on a hot highway to hell. I love that. You have to understand the power. Jesus didn't just die to, to save you from your struggle. He died to save you from the curse of sin and death and set you free to live in the power of new beginnings every day of your life. Revelation 22, 13 says this, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I start beginnings and I And the end of the endings, I've put them to death. She. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit's sowing this into your heart for this year. It'll be like no other year for you if you let God make it a new beginning. Our, our new life in Christ is now a journey of new beginnings. Not beginnings, end, beginnings, end. No, no. It's a, it's a journey of new beginnings. Eternal life is the continuum of strength to strength, glory to glory. There's no dip down. In Numbers, now, now let me get practical. In Numbers 33 verse 2, listen to this. Now Moses, he was coming out of Egypt journeying toward the promised land of rich fulfillment. And he's in the wilderness. Should have been a short journey. And uh, because of unbelief, it took them longer than it should. But this is what God said to Moses. I'll read it. Now Moses wrote down the starting points, the beginnings of their journeys every day at the command of the Lord. And these are their journeys according to their starting points. This is the most powerful yet practical thing you'll ever do. You have to change your diary habits. 
Most people at the end of a day write down in their diary, well, I ate this for breakfast, I went uh, and I met this person and we went for, and we did this and, uh, and, and I'm tired tonight. And that's the journey as they record it when they reach the destination at the end of that day. God said, do the opposite. If you want to live in the power of new beginnings, you've got to write in your diary every day, every day, before you set out that day, you have to write in your diary at the beginning of the journey what God is going to do, what you are planning to possess, what you see in your dreams and what you're going to speak into that day. Write it down before you do anything. Don't do it at the end of your journey. Any, any fool can record, you know, the, the mess that's, that was that day. But if you write it down at the beginning of the day, you won't just be recording a mess. You'll be recording your testimony as a message. This is how I overcame and made the journey complete this day by the will of God. You hear what I'm saying? This is so powerful. It'll work for you if you start to practically put it into your life every day. So every day is a new beginning when it's based on a God promise. According to the Word of the Lord, right down at the beginning, where you intend to go today. Well, I'm going to dare to lead a soul to Jesus today. I'm going to uh, do this to upskill. I'm going to meet somebody and uh, be a blessed, whatever. You write down the promise of God that day to you. And one of the reasons I'm so uh, fixated, committed, adamant about daily devotions being in the morning. Some people say I'm not a morning person. Well, you can train yourself to be anything. We do have propensities toward but you can train yourself according to the convictions of your life. And so because of this understanding of new beginnings, set out on your journey every day uh, according to the will and promise of God, I have made da daily devotions an integral part of who I am. Now I, my body is in sync with that. It, it has habits that wake me up early in the morning so that then I pursue the presence of God and start to write down my dreams, my plans, my schemes for that day. My diary is set in my devotions. My diary is set in my devotions. Did you get that? Write down at the beginning where you intend to be by tonight. Do it for the month. Do it for the week. Do it for the year. Do it for a decade. Daily devotions is setting your starting points for every new day. I love that. I'm praying that that will become a revelation to me. Let me give you some stuff quickly. Starting points, I'll shoot through these. Starting points, number one, change your attitude from endings to beginnings. Make it a habit. And uh, it'll change your, your, the way you do life from, ah, oh, well, that's the end of that day. I, I scrape, no, no, this is the start of the day. This is what God, by His grace, is going to. Starting points number two, require faith and boldness to move forward. You don't drop yourself out of bed, and, you know, just drag yourself into the day. If you, if you have a starting point, and it's in devotions, a new beginning. You've got faith that's born there. You've heard God's voice. You've read His Word. And uh, there's a destination for that day, that week, that month, whatever it is that you are pursuing by the grace of God. So it gives you faith and boldness. Starting points three, begin with little, but expect to accomplish much. Whenever it's a starting point that's God-breathed, it's bigger than you can naturally think or dare to, dare to expect. But that's the, that's the power of a new beginning. It is bigger than you. It is be above and beyond. And it causes you, even though there, you have little strength or little finance or little you know, uh, support, 
You dare to believe that God's in it and little can become much because God is working. So you just start just as you are. Today will be this kind of a day and watch God do miracles as He makes a new beginning come into fruition. Starting points, number 12, whatever it is, starting points turn life into a journey of fresh challenges. Do you know the thing that's so destructive to the soul of man is routine, is the boredom of doing the same thing, going round and around the wilderness until a generation dies. That's why God said, do it every day. Get them believing for something new today and it turns life into a journey of fresh challenges. Ask yourself, if this message is for you, ask yourself, what's the challenge today that you are praying and daring to believe see come to part? What are you, what are you daring to believe for? That's what new beginnings do. It turns your life into fresh challenges. Your life has purpose when you pursue a promise as a new beginning. Next one, starting points, overcome fatalism and inertia. Stops you being negative all the time. Well, I failed yesterday. I'll probably fail today. And there's not much happening in my future. I'm just not in that place. Stop it. Make today a new beginning. Get into God, get a word from God about today. It may not be something written on the wall of your office or your bedroom. It may just be a scripture you read and God says, I'm going to be with you. I'll strengthen you. Take that as a promise. You can do things by His strength you couldn't do yesterday. Next one, starting points, bring you back to first love. I love this one. Every morning. As I spend time in God's presence, I declare a new beginning. It brings me back to the simplicity, the childlike faith that I had when I first got saved and came alive to God. And it's so easy to start to carry baggage, hurts, disappointments and all that stuff. And you start to find life is an arduous journey full of frightening challenges but if you come back to starting points, this is a new day. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm not the same person I was yesterday because I'm in His presence. He's given me His Word and it brings you back to first love. And then maybe one more is this. And I love this one, starting points. If today's a new beginning in your life, why are you still carrying unforgiveness from yesterday? Starting points allow people to regroup, to rejoin you. It's a new beginning today. Therefore, I have to reconnect with some of the people that have fallen out of my life, that, that there's no longer a bond of unity and love with. That's what starting points do. Well, it's, they haven't changed. No, but you have. This is a new beginning for you. You've changed. And God can do an amazing thing. And uh, one of those areas is forgiveness. Forgiveness is the door to new beginnings. And if this day is your starting point, is today a new beginning, then forgiveness will be one of the, the, the codes on the door that unlocks it for you. There's a little verse and I'm finished with this. And it says this, Revelation 21, verse 5. It says, Then he who sat on the throne, this is at the end of history, human history, with all its ups and downs, chaos and defeat. And, uh, in the midst of all that, God brings through an incredible people like you and I that hold on to the promises. And then at the end of it, Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He's going to do a job on the brokenness of physical creation and everything, a new heavens and a new earth will come out as a new beginning for eternity. That's the guarantee that this whole 
theology of new beginnings can work in your life because He sits on the throne. He's over and above. He is above and beyond. And He's made the promise to you, if you'll start to set your day by starting points and new beginnings, there's no limit to where I can take you and lead you into all rich fulfilment in Jesus' name. Amen. You got that? I tell you, I'm so excited about this year because this is a year when God is going to take us in that continuum of new beginnings. Why don't you get on board and start to see God do incredible things for you and through you this year. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for all that you're saying to your church, to your people, to every family and to every man and woman that dares to believe in the Lord our God. I thank you that you have put an end to endings and you are continually creating new beginnings that we might enjoy the lavish richness of your good pleasure and grace. Pray for every person that has joined with us today, that's listening to my message. May they get a revelation that today they can begin the journey and with not just a second chance, but a brand new beginning, a new creation journey into all that God has planned for each one of us today. Bless each one in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Hey, God love you. Great to catch up and join together. Share the word. May this year be rich fulfillment in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. God love you.